If you're not brand spanking new to the channel, you probably already know what a wave maker is and many of the benefits that comes with it. If you are brand new, maybe you don't know, don't worry about it. We'll get into that later on in the video. This video is going to be about the placement of your wave maker when you have two canister filters that come with two outputs, obviously, right? And if you didn't already know, on this channel, I like to get straight to the point, so let's get to it. So here's an overhead view of the 210. Don't mind my calcium buildup. It's a never-ending battle. Don't judge me. Here's how I set up my two canister filters to work together with my wave maker. On either end of the tank, in one corner I have an intake, and on the other corner I have the other intake. Right in the middle of the tank are my two outputs, output one and output two. This is how I set up my outputs. Now, here is the difference. As you can see, this output is facing towards the left, pushing water to the left. If you guys can see that. This output is also facing towards the left and pushing water to the left. The reason why both of those outputs that are somewhat in the center of the tank are both pushing water to the left is because my wave maker is on the top right side also pushing water to the left. One major factor of the wave maker is water circulation in your tank. And if you've got your wave maker on the top angled upwards for surface agitation, which you should be, then you want all that water on the surface to be traveling in the same direction. As all the water travels across the tank and hits the edge, it will travel down to the bottom and back across over your substrate, back to the other side and back up to the wave maker. This is what you want to have in your tank. You want that wave maker in the corner there to create a circular pattern of water. The reason why you keep both pointing to the same direction is so that all the water on the surface is pushing to the same side and you don't have water crashing into each other. This is gonna help create a circular vortex of water in your tank. Some other benefits of a wave maker besides the surface agitation and the water movement is that it creates a nice flow of water in the tank to minimize aggression even though Rocco right there has decided to chase uh, my giraffe hap while I'm recording great timing Rocco but generally creating that current and that flow in your tank is gonna help minimize the aggression in your African cichlids another great benefit of a wave maker it's going to keep your substrate clean by pulling all of the detritus across your substrate towards the wave maker where your filter intake should be on the same side as your wave maker. I've got a little bit of detritus build up right there in that corner. That's because I just fed them not too long ago. But take a look at the rest of the substrate. It is super duper clean, not a speck of detritus on it. That's what the wave maker is going to do for you. If you're interested in the exact wave maker that I use, this is a Unic Life 3400 gallon per hour wave maker. It has adjustable power and adjustable waveforms. It also has a night light function. Comes with a very cool control box where you can control the power, the waveforms, all that good stuff. But you don't necessarily have to get one that's 3,400 gallons per hour. That's what I use for a 210 gallon tank. They have smaller gallons per hour as well. You can find the link for it down in the description or in the brand new YouTube product shelf right below this video. That's super cool. All of those products there are affiliate products. If you purchase anything with my affiliate links, uh, I get a small little commission at no extra cost to you and you help support the channel. So thank you in advance. Another question that I get all the time is if a wave maker is good for any type of fish and the answer is no. In my 150 gallon discus tank and arowana, as you can see, there is no wave maker in this tank. These guys like to stay pretty still and pretty calm. Check them out. So putting a wave maker in here is just gonna cause them a lot of stress that they do not need. So know your fish, know if they like a good flow and a good current before you go ahead and get a wave maker. Also, I recommend that you have at least a 30 gallon tank to put a wave maker in it. Anything smaller than that, I suggest that you use an air stone for good surface agitation and good water movement. If you put a wave maker in a 10 gallon, it's just gonna blow whatever you got around and they're not gonna be happy. Now, in case you're paying close attention and you notice how crystal clear this water is, don't worry, I know I, I look a little dark, it's because the camera's focused on the tank right now. I can help you get that too. Check out my book on crystal clear aquarium water. It's only five bucks and it covers all the causes for cloudy water along with all the solutions as well. Trust me when I tell you that you will not be disappointed. 
Or if you like video format, check that video out right there. That's also going to help you get crystal clear water. See you guys in the next one.